Another revealing story of British aircraft production comes with a visit by Pat A. Gazette cameramen to a factory where men and women are building and assembling large numbers of the celebrated Boat and Paul Defiant fighter aircraft. From the maze of precision instruments and workshop tools are being fashioned the planes which produced one of the first air surprises of the war. Over the beaches of Dunkirk, the Germans got the shock of their lives when, after getting on the tails of the Defiance, they were shot down apparently from nowhere. The backward firing, power operated four gun turret ripped the Luftwaffe planes to pieces. In the tail unit assembly shop, girl operatives rivet the sections and fit the outer metal skin to the tail plane. With the increasing development of night flying interceptors, the Defiant has proved an excellent night fighter and is now sharing that important duty with the bow fighter, the American built Havoc, and others. Elevators and rudders are here being covered. The fabric is then given its doping process. Sewing is an operation which calls for infinitely more skill than ordinary stitching. Later on, when construction is completed, the whole machine will be sprayed with a black paint worn by all our night fighters. The gun turret, the real sting of the Defiant, and the air screw spinner and engine cowlings are fitted. A final checkup on the retractable landing gear, and another fine machine takes its place in the line drawn up on the tarmac. Before delivery to any squadron, the planes are taken up by test pilots, men who, as physicians of the air, diagnose every characteristic of each plane as they subject it to a whole catalogue of excessive tests. The first time this type of machine was used on a large scale, one squadron shot down 37 German fighters and bombers without loss, and in three days accounted for 60 enemy aircraft. Powerful, defiant, and as dauntless as the brood that gave it birth. Hello guys, and welcome back to part... What is it now? Six. Right, so what... This part we're going to do is we're going to paint the aircraft in its base colours. Uh, as you can see, it's already been primed, and if you use what prime I've used, it is this primer just here. Uh, plastic coat. I've uh, never heard of the company before, but it's a very good primer. It's a very nice smooth finish to everything. It's very nice. Uh, do, 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 well, I'll talk about well the panel lines have come out very good than what I thought they would do. I've just had to go over again underneath here and worry about so long this wing here because I kind of a bit of overspray on that part. But that is all that's gone wrong with it. So well, that's alright. Now basically why I've done this now, this video before I do anything, is because uh, I'm going to put up the base coat on which is going to be the XF52 Flat Earth from um, Tamiya. But the reason why I did it now because I can't really record the next part because I'm going to airbrush it. Now I know what you said, you're going to you know, paint it and all that with brush. The problem is though, uh, the colour I want to get, I don't want it too dark and so I need to mix a bit of white with it and of course mixing with Tamiya colours is actually, yeah, and basically there much easier to airbrush when you've mixed the colour and plus it gives, with airbrush it gives a lighter tone to the model so I didn't want it like too dark like this, I just want a light colour so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off and airbrush this in a lighter tone of the flat earth um, give it two coats of that and then come back and we'll start on the top camouflage which is the green one I'm doing that brush paint because that's the actual camo pattern so and I've got that already in one colour so without further ado I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, back to you in a minute right with 
base coat on. Well, what a disappointment I have. Not with the kit, but with the paint. Uh, you won't believe this, but I've had about five different coats of paint on that. And I'm finally still not happy with it. Uh, well, I am, but it's just how it is at the minute. Basically what it is was, uh, I did the first coat, too dark, which I'll show you now. Use this colour, uh, Tamiya XF52, put that on, too dark. Lighten it up, too light. The problem is though, it did also give a grit effect on the work surface, so that kind of sadly ruined it. So then uh, I stripped off put another coat of paint down in a different version but still still too dark so basically what I did was I settled on this colour which is uh, Mr Hobby H72 now this absolutely works a treat guys they are nice paints very very nice and what I did I used that a bit of just a touch of white and this is how it came out as the perfect colour the only problem is it's not the best of surface because of this. Uh, it gave it a grit effect and now it's just slightly gritty. So basically what I've done is, um, just to test it, the green camouflage, I've painted a bit brush handed on here. And that is smooth as anything. So basically if you just run across it, it should be alright. So that's the plan so far. So basically what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add the green camo on top, which is this colour, and I'm settled with trusty paint brushing. I'm sick to death of airbrushing now, about five times airbrushing back and forth, changing, then also cleaning it out, making sure there's no grit on it, and oh, it's just a nightmare. I think I'll just stick to paint brushing, to be honest, it's absolute madness. I mean, if you just listen. You can hear the grits. That's hear the, and I don't. I don't know where you can see it. Yeah. See if I can see. Wrong way. Zoom you in there. Refocus you a bit. Like I think, if you might not be in the light there, you can see all the grit on there. It's just absolutely horrible. So what my plan is, I'm going to put the green camo on. Sand with a very fine sponge, just the top surface off of it, and hopefully get a nice smooth surface. And along the fuselage here on the engine cowl is not bad, it's just along the wings and the fuselage section at the back here. So I'm just gonna, basically, what I'm going, I'm going to test it first. I'm going to put the green camera on and then just try just a little bit of gloss varnish and see if it's smoothing out. But if not, then I'm just going to have to repaint over it and paintbrush it this time. I'm not going to airbrush it. Trusty paint moving. Right, I'm going to kick this into time lapse and we'll see how we get on. You were the shadow to my life. Did you feel a the star you fade away afraid our aim is out of sight wanna see We have the main paint on, which is the green and the brown, and of course the underside. Oh, hold on, I haven't done that, have I? I'll just do this very quickly. Uh, right, so uh, what we do now is we have the all the camouflage on and 
very ready to go basically. Just need to seal in with the varnish. So I'm using Humble Gloss Clear. It's a gloss varnish, uh, it's water based and it's very, very good. So, uh, what I've done is I did do this wing a bit because um, I wasn't 100% sure about this um, brown camouflage going on the top, but I've had a look online and turned out a fairly new aircraft did have this camouflage. But after weathering and everything else like that, it would look a bit darker. So I'm really happy with that, and plus the gloss varnish makes it darker as well. So I'm just going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to open this varnish if I can do. Ah, trouble at this top. Yeah, it doesn't come off. Come on. Right, got it off. There you go. So uh, I'm gonna. You can do this for an airbrush. You want straight from the bottom to the airbrush, and then just clear it out of the end with water. But I'm just gonna brush it on because it's simpler and much easier to use. I'm just gonna use a little bit like that. Just gonna have a nice smooth finish over the top of the surface like that. Like that. The only one little bit, so I don't want too much because it wouldn't give it a nice uh, even layer. Uh, for vapor, well, it does uh, get a smell a bit. If you don't like um, breathe too much in, you should be all right. But why would you like breathe this in? It's just stupid. The amount of times I've been stopped at craft for. Uh, how do I put it? Over, uh, you have to be over 18 to buy this. I am over 18. Do you have any idea? Not me at the minute. Well, I can't give it you then, but I am 18. Typical insert. I do have an idea on me most of the times now, whenever I go shopping or just driving any times. Yeah, you get the picture. Go do this. You only want the little tiny, like thin layers over the top to start off with, because we can go over another layer afterwards, so it should be alright. Well, hmm. I'm just gonna, if it is, is there too much access, just wipe it off a bit before it fully dries. Because if you um, leave it to fully dry and then take it away, it will take the paint away as well, so just be careful when you do that. Right, so I think I'm gonna kick this into time lapse and then. See what happens next.